Hello everyone, my name is Jim Delapine and there has been a very strong interest from my students with regards to the animation capabilities that you can achieve using the Adobe Creative Suite. So I'm going to do a basic demo on how to get this butterfly to fly across this flower field using Illustrator, Photoshop and After Effects only. And I'm also actually going to be incorporating a QuickTime video of moving clouds that you have seen in the background there. Okay, these clouds have been time-lapsed, so I'm going to close out of this and we'll begin immediately. The first thing is I'd like to show you the assets that I've used with regards to this animation. So I'm going to show you the three, the three files that I'm working with. So I started out with getting this image from Google and removing the background sky. So I just have this flower field here. Okay, I needed to double click on the background layer and hit OK to unflatten that layer. And then once I hit delete, I have transparency and then I needed to save that as a PNG file in order to retain the transparency. The next file that I worked with is an Illustrator file. So this is another image I got from Google. And what I did was I, I got an image of a butterfly and it looks like this. And I created a template out of it by double clicking on layer one and checking the template option. And I now have a template to work with, which allows me to see a bitmap in outline mode. And then as you can see here, I traced that template and created my right wing. And then I duplicated that wing brought it to another layer and mirrored it. So I have a perfectly symmetrical butterfly. And then of course I created the body. So I needed to do this in order to animate each of these layers individually once I get into After Effects. Okay, so this is my result. And I'm going to minimize Illustrator now and talk about the Adobe uh, After Effects interface. But before I do, I also want to show you the movie file that I'm going to also incorporate. So this is a simple QuickTime video with some clouds that have been time-lapsed. It's 20 seconds long, so I'll be working with that. So what I've done was I've already imported this movie file into my project bin, which we'll talk about shortly. And I've also brought in the tulip field that I just showed you that I created in Photoshop. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is briefly talk about the interface here. So what we have here is a project bin, and this is where all of your animation assets that will be contained in your movie will reside. So anything that's in the animation will exist here, and this is where you'll bring everything into, okay? This is your composition window here, and this is where you'll see the animation. This is your canvas, so to speak. Okay, down below here you have a timeline. This is where you can create keyframes and create your actual animation. All right, there's another a variety of panels here on the right. Okay, so I'm going to begin by importing that Illustrator file that I just showed you of the butterfly. So I'm going to either go to File, Import, File, or I can simply double click in the background of my Project Bin window to open up my folder here, which I have a variety of experiments that I've been working with and so on. So this is the Illustrator file. So I'm going to double click or highlight that and click open. So I like to double click, it's quicker. And that will bring up a window that will ask me how I want to import this. So I want to import this as a composition as opposed to footage. Okay, I want the composition because I'll be working with that composition and along with the composition, I will have a folder that will contain all the layers of that Illustrator file. Okay, it's going to bring it in as, as that layer size also. So I'll hit OK. And you'll note that I have a folder here in the Project Bin window that contains all of my Illustrator layers. In addition to that, there is what's called a composition. All right, so if I simply double click on that composition icon, I've now opened up that composition. And as you can see here, you see the butterfly that I've created in Illustrator, and it comes in as a transparency. Okay, by default, After Effects provides you with a black background. In effect, this is transparent. So just to show you how that works, if I go to Composition, Composition Settings, 
I can change the background color here by double clicking on that and let's say we'll choose a gray. So you can instantly see here the results. Before I hit OK here, this is also where you'll see the actual size of your document. You can create your own size. You can create the length of your animation and so on. So we're going to work with this a little bit before I hit OK. So my document is going to be the same size as my Photoshop file. I'm going to make this a standard uh, 800 pixels wide. And I'm going to tab down to the height and make that 600. Tab down again, and you can see it automatically updated that. I'm going to make the length of the animation 20 seconds. OK, so this comes in, in a breakdown of units and represents hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. So in video, there are approximately 30 frames per second, which is the standard. So that's the default here. So I'm going to hit OK. So we now have a 20 second animation set up for ourselves. Now, if we can uh, look at the timeline, you'll note that once I opened up the butterfly composition, you'll see four different layers here. And the bottom layer represents the template. So I don't need that, so I'm going to highlight that and delete it. Okay. I'm now going to take it a step further and bring in the tulip field all right, to show you how this works. So I'm going to simply take and drag a file from my project bin down to the bottom layer. Okay, and you can see it comes in in the background. If I brought it into the top layer, it would basically be in front of the butterfly, and we don't want that. So I'm bringing it down to the bottom of the stacking order. All right, so what I'm going to do is lock that tulip field layer for now and work with the butterfly. So we have to set that up. So let me just scroll down here a little bit and zoom in and talk about the butterfly and how to set this up. So the first thing we need to do is set the butterfly up for individual animation for each wing. So I'm going to first select the right wing. All right, now. By default, there's a center point, and we want to rotate this wing, okay? Before we can do anything, we want to create a 3D environment for the butterfly. So I'm going to look at this column here, and you'll see a cube up here, which represents 3D layers. So by simply clicking on each of these columns here with the corresponding layer, I've now created a 3D environment for the wing which means if I click on this drop down menu to look into the layer and you, dig, you have to dig deep a little bit and you can see here that you have all kinds of settings here so we'll be working with the Y rotation for the wing now watch what happens when I scrub this part of the Y rotation setting All right, we have a hinge point and that wing's hinging around a center point. All right, we don't want that. We need to set this up so that it hinges at the butterfly's body. So what we need to do is go to the pan from behind tool and come down here and move what's called a widget. All right, I'm going to click and drag this to the center of the butterfly's body. Now the next step is to actually look at the Y rotation and we'll look at what the result is here. So now we have a flapping that makes sense. So we're going to go back to zero and talk about keyframes. Animation is all about keyframes and settings within those keyframes. So what we need to do is create a keyframe at zero or what is called home. All right, zero point in time. And we do that by clicking on the stopwatch here, this tiny little icon right next to the Y rotation. So I'm going to click that. And you can see that it creates a small yellow diamond. That is a keyframe. OK? So at zero point in time, we're telling After Effects, this is where we want this wing to be setting-wise within the Y rotation at zero point in time. So now what I'm going to do is advance three keyframes. So I'm going to click one, two, three times, and that will advance me to my third keyframe. Now, I need to talk a little bit about the preview uh, panel here. This center triangle is the play button. The button immediately to the right 
will bring you to the next frame. It, it will advance you forward one frame at a time. The far right button, the last frame of the animation. The previous icon right here, this button represents the previous frame. And this first here will bring you to the beginning of the animation or home. You could also hit zero. With that explanation quickly discussed, we will advance forward now. So I want to tell the butterfly to flap this wing at the third frame, 93 degrees. So I want to go a little bit past the halfway point here. I can actually type that in. So 93, all right? If that was at 90, we couldn't see it. It would be a straight line. So it went a little bit past the halfway point, all right? Now, we can actually zoom into the timeline by clicking on this area right here and zooming in. So we can, we're can we now zoomed in and we can see one second, two seconds, three seconds. All right, so we can see our second keyframe here. So we're now going to advance three more keyframes and now click on this area right here and hit zero to bring it back to zero degrees. Now, I need to talk about this. Every time you make any change, it will automatically create a new keyframe. You do not want to click a stopwatch again, because if you do, that will delete all of the keyframes. It will delete all your, your work. You only want to click on this stopwatch for the first keyframe. After that, do not click it again. Okay? Now we'll advance three more keyframes, and I'm now going to bring this back up to 93 degrees. And now I'll advance three more. One, two, three. All right. So actually, before I advance, let's just show you what occurred. So if I scrub this playhead here, also called the current time indicator, if you click and scrub, you'll see that I have two full flaps. All right. So I'm going to go to the last keyframe and advance three forward. Okay, so we can continue to do that and create a constant flapping along the entire timeline, but it will be a lot of work. You could actually copy and paste. You could actually select all these keyframes and copy and paste, copy and paste. But there's a better way to do that. We're going to create what's called an expression. Expression is the name for coding within After Effects. In Flash, it would be called Action Script. Website design, you have HTML and so on. So to access the expression dialog area, you need to alt click or option click if you're in the Mac environment. So I'm alt clicking on the stopwatch and that brings up a window here that allows for typing. So what I'm going to do is actually type in an expression. So that expression, I happen to know it is L-O-O-P, capital O, lowercase u-t. All right, and then in parentheses, cap T, and then Y, P, E, equals, so the type equals, and in quotes, I'm going to type in the word cycle. So I want this to cycle or loop. And then I'm going to end quote the word cycle, and then close that, and then I will close it with parentheses. Okay? Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to think step ahead here. I'm going to copy this coding into my clipboard here because I'm going to use that for the other wing. So I'm just going to copy that before I continue. And now I'll click the play button to see if I type this in correctly. So if I click play, there we go. So we have a constant flapping. All right, so that saved us a lot of work. So I'm going to go back home. And now we'll close or collapse this layer here, and we'll work with the left wing. So I'm going to click on the drop-down triangle and dig down into the transform option. And before we begin with the left wing, I need to do the following. I need to change the hinge point for the left wing. So I need to go to the pan from behind tool and move that widget to the center point. So that looks pretty good. And I will now go to the Y rotation and create my first keyframe by clicking on the stopwatch. I'll then advance three keyframes, one, two, three. And now what I'll do is type in minus 93. All right, so we're coming in the opposite direction. I'll hit enter, and now I'll advance three more, one, two, three, go back to zero, hit enter. 
and advance three more, one, two, three, and type in minus 93. All right, so we have a consistent flapping in unison. So I'm going to go to my last keyframe now and advance forward one, two, three. Access the expression area by alt clicking on the stopwatch. And now I'm going to paste that expression that was in my clipboard into this area here. So control V and now I'll play the preview. And there we go. So we're good to go. All right. So we're going to go back home. So we're going to proceed now to linking the wings to the butterfly's body. They call it parenting in After Effects. So with the right wing selected in this parent column right here, you'll see this drop down menu. It says none. I'm going to click on the drop down menu and select body. So what I've done is just linked this wing to the body. So anything I do to the body will occur to the wing. So what I'm going to be doing is animating the body flying across this flower field and the wings will follow. Okay, next step is to parent the left wing to the body. All right, so I'm good to go. So now if I go back to the body, I'm going to leave my pan from behind tool and go to the selection tool and click on the body, you can see that the wings follow. The next step is I'm going to open up the body layer and access all of these other options in here. So anything with a stopwatch means that you have the option of animating that setting. So I could animate the position, the scale, the X rotation, which is left to right, Y rotation, which is up and down, and the Z rotation, which is forward to backwards, and so on. All right, that's simply put. All right, so for rotation, I want to adjust the X axis. All right, so the X axis, now check this out. All right, so for the X axis, I'm going to go to ah, something like that, maybe minus 60 or so. All right, and for the Z rotation, I'm going to type in numbers, or you can click and scrub or drag to the left or right. Okay, so I'm going to go to around um, 30. That makes sense. All right. All right, now, uh, with regards to the composition, if you wanted to zoom in and out, you'd use your middle roller on your mouse to zoom in and out. If you wanted to reposition, you'd hold down your space bar, just like in Photoshop, and reposition your composition. Okay, so we're going to begin by creating a keyframe for the position and for the scale. That doesn't mean we can't change it while we're in here. Whatever it is within that setting at the current time is what it is right now. I'm going to make the scale of the butterfly 200%. Going to increase the size. I'm going to double his size. All right, I'm now going to position him off to the side, outside of the viewing area. So keep in mind that once we render this as a movie, the only thing that you'll see is what's within this area right here. Everything in the gray area is outside of the viewing area. So I'm going to drag this butterfly out. All right, and so we can see the butterfly flapping in its skeleton version, okay? So I'm telling After Effects, this is where I want the butterfly to be at zero point in time, and this is where, how large I want him to be. So I'm going to advance forward, and I'm going to actually enlarge in this here, all right, so I get a better sense of where I'm at. So I'm going to advance forward, maybe a second or two. This is actually about a second and a half. I want to bring the butterfly into view here, so I can look at the position and what you see here are three settings here you have the x-axis the y-axis is in the center and the z-axis is the last option here so I can click and scrub to change the actual location the position of the butterfly now I can also what I want to do is change the scale dramatically so I want this butterfly to appear as if he's coming in from behind my left ear and flying into the viewing area. So I'm going to change the scale down to 20%. All right, so you can see where he is right now. 
Furthermore, you can see this widget here, which is represented by a blue arrow, which is the y-axis, the green arrow, and the red arrow. So you have a bunch of different options here. I actually like to work with the position option and scrubbing it. Okay, I, I like that control. So I'm going to zoom in, middle roller, spacebar to drag over, and I'm also going to have him land on top of this tulip here. So I'm now working with the y-axis. And I'm also noting here that he's kind of turned the wrong way. All right, so if I go down here and look, you can work with these settings here. All right, so I can change the direction of flight by simply doing that. Okay, let me zoom back out. So I'm now going to advance forward and what I want to do is tell this butterfly to stay on top of this flower for a while. He's going to explore this flower. Uh, I'm saying he, it could be a she. I actually do think of butterflies as being female, so I'm going to try to say she. I'm going to now duplicate this setting to this new point in time by going over to these diamonds here in the center, and you have the triangles here. The center diamond, if you click on that, it will duplicate this last setting to the current point in time, which means he will stay in this position from this point in time to this point in time. Okay? I'm now going to advance forward, and I'm going to now bring the butterfly to a new location. So I'm going to scrub this. And um, I'll actually bring him over to this larger flower up here. And I'll drag him up using the y-axis. And I can go zooming in and just see how. All right. So you might be saying, well, what about turning? You know, he's, right now he's going backwards. We'll resolve that later on. So I want this butterfly to stay here for a certain amount of time. So I'm going to scrub my playhead forward and click on this center diamond and that will duplicate that. Now I also want him to start to get a little smaller. So I'll advance forward again and keep in mind that uh, I could go on forever and have, have this butterfly fly all around the field. I'm going to kind of keep this simple. So I'm now going to change the location. So I'm going to bring the butterfly up here and bring him up a little bit, all right? And I'm now going to actually come back here. Let me go back to this point in time. And I want to retain this scaling at this point. So I'm going to click on that diamond. And I'm now I'm going to have him go from 20% down at this point in time to 10%. All right, so he's shrinking a little more. I'm now going to scrub forward. And I'm going to have him fly in a loop and then fly out of view here. So I'll now. Um, move him to another location, move him up a little bit, scaling by clicking on the diamond, move forward, bring him to another location, and I'm actually going to now scale him back up to 20%. All right, because now it'll give the appearance that he's coming forward. And now I will actually drag all the way down to the end here. I'm going to the last or to the end of my animation. So now what I'll do is actually scrub my position and drag him out of view. And I'm also going to have him scale from 20% down to 0% so that he disappears or it looks like he's flying off into the distance. All right, so let's just take a quick look at what we have so far. So I'm going to I'm going to uh, go home by clicking on this icon right here and we're just going to now play the animation. Now keep in mind this is not real time yet. All right, it's it's processing into RAM and once you can see this green this green bar advancing. Once it gets to the end, it will be in true time. Okay, so it will loop over, it will play again in real time. 
There we go. All right, so he's leaning on the flower, staying there shortly, going to the other flower, and then flying over here, doing a loop, getting larger, and then flying off into the distance. All right, so he's a very slow butterfly, but keep in mind there's other options here. You can separate these keyframes. So, for example, he's on this tulip here for a short period of time. What I can do is separate these keyframes so that he's there longer. I can also separate these keyframes. So I can, I'm changing my timing for everything. All right, so he's on that tulip a little longer now. So I can come back there, leave, and now this is how you can change the timing if you're not happy with the timing. Okay. All right, so let me go come back home, and let's talk about the movie, the clouds. All right, so let me just collapse everything, and here is my QuickTime movie of clouds. So I'll simply drag that down to the timeline, and keep in mind that the stacking order is important. So if I drag this down to the top layer, it's going to cover everything. So you obviously want to bring this down to the bottom, and because I've cut out the top of the tulip area to transparency the clouds are visible okay so you can reduce the scale of it if you want to have it fit better you can move it up you could also squeeze it a little bit and of course it's processing into RAM all right so we have that going on all right so let's proceed further and let me zoom in here now with regards to the animation or the direction of the butterfly so what I'm going to do is go down to the body drop down menu. I'm going to select the word position and I'm going to hit the shortcut. And this is the shortcut for having the butterfly follow correct itself along the orientation of the path. So if I hit control alt o it brings up the auto orientation window. So I want to have him orient along the path that I've created. So I'll hit okay after clicking on that radio button. All right, and now we'll see the result. So let me click away and now scrub the playhead. So let's zoom in a little bit. Now a funky thing happened to the butterfly. All right, and we can correct that. All right, so back here, what you need to do is work with the XYZ rotation to get this butterfly to look correct. So I can simply scrub this. I'm gonna, you can work with each of the uh, angles until it looks correct. And I think that works okay. Yes. All right, so if I scrub along, you can see that he's turned himself around, herself around. All right, and she's flying correctly. All right, so that's a nice, neat little trick here. So control alt O as opposed to zero. Okay, so we have a nice thing happening here. Now, the last thing is this. All right, we have to represent what the human eye truly sees. And the human eye, once this is animating, would not see this butterfly this crisp and clear. It really is a blur. I mean, a butterfly flies very neurotically and quickly. So we're going to add a sense of realism to that. All right, so. What we're going to do is click in the uh, body column here for the motion blur option. All right. So the first thing you want to do is click on the enable motion blur option for all layers and then go to each individual layer and select in that column that box and you'll notice immediately the blurring that occurs. It may look a little odd right now but when we create the animation you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to hit the play button and he's turning around pretty good. Keep in mind you could also go in and fine tune that. If you want that butterfly to slowly rotate while he, she's on a tulip, you could certainly do that. Okay, it's a matter of playing with these keyframes and experimenting. Okay, so this is real time. She's actually flying um, a little slow, but I could have, you know, you very simply add more keyframes and move those keyframes closer together, and that butterfly will fly quicker. Okay, so um, we've got our animation here. All right, so there's other things you could possibly do in here, but uh, this is the basics. Now, what I want to do is show you how to render your movie. All right, you can render this as a number of options here. 
And you do that by going to Composition, Add to Render Queue. And in the bottom area here, um, you'll see a tab that comes up to your next to your timeline area here. For the, the first thing you're going to do is go to the Output module and click on the word Lossless. And this is the basics. Okay. What you'll see here is the Output Module Settings. By default, AVI comes up. That is a very high quality file, also a very large file. I'm going to select H264 because it offers uh, a lower file size and good quality. It's also appropriate for Facebook, for example, or um, YouTube. Okay, and also if you have audio in here, I didn't show you how to do that, but it's quite simple. You can bring in an AVI file or a number of other assorted audio formats and simply drag that down to the timeline. And then if you had audio in there, you would simply check the audio output option and that will render the any music or any audio into your movie. Okay, and then I'll hit OK. And then what you want to do is designate the name of your um, movie and also the location as to where you're going to save it to. All right, so I'll just call mine, I, since I rented one before, I'll call it two. And you'll hit save. All right, so that saves the location, saves the name. And the last thing you need to do is simply click the word render. Okay, so now it will be rendering in. And you can see it advancing with this bar here. Once it gets to the end, you, you get this really cool sound that the animation has completed rendering. And you'll then have yourself a nice little movie for uploading and doing whatever. Okay. So this is a relatively small file, and it's about to complete. And here we are. So that's the completed product of what we just did in almost in less than 40 minutes all right that butterfly is definitely flying too slow but it's okay all right um it's it's going to loop and you have your controls down here you can stop it if you'd like start it again and so on and so forth all right now let me just also show you one last thing um, and that is you can change the direction of the butterfly. You can change the path the butterfly flies in by doing the following. And so notice as you go along that there is a path that this butterfly is following. You can actually change that path. And there are handles here that you can edit the curvature of the path. And what you're basically working with is the Bezier curve. So that's a whole other learning process of working with the Bezier curve. Um, but knowing and understanding the Bezier curve is critical because that's the essence of editing shapes in Illustrator. It also comes into play with Flash and Photoshop and most other graphics-oriented programs. All right, so I hope that was of value to you, and I will speak to you guys soon.